Armando Hasurigan, Biology and Medicine videos. Please make sure to subscribe, join the forming group for the latest videos. Please visit Facebook Armando Hasurigan. Here you can also like, please ask questions, answer questions, and post some interesting things such as artworks because it would be nice. And you can also change the quality settings to the highest one for better graphics. In this video, we're going to talk about trigonometry, which is essentially the study of triangles in maths and even in physics. Particularly, we're looking at a right angle triangle. Uh, and so here is a right angle triangle with a right angle, 90 degrees over here. And usually when we study trigonometry, there is always an angle of concern, an angle that we're trying to find or an angle that we're going to use for using the, the equations that I'll soon show. And there are also sides within a triangle. And before we continue, we have to learn about how to designate the sides. So for example, Z is the hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse is always opposite the right angle and is usually the longer side. Well, typically, you always the longer side. And therefore, the remaining sides, X and Y, we can, des we can also designate names, depending on its location in respect with the angle. So for example, because X is closer to the angle of concern, we call X uh, the adjacent side. And also Y is opposite the angle of concern, so we call Y um, the opposite side, so opposite to angle. And now the basic trigonometry functions defined by such a triangle are the ratios of the lengths of the side of the triangle. And so this might sound confusing, but essentially the ratios of the lengths of the side of the triangle can be given by three trigonometry functions, and these are sine, sine, cosine, cos, and tangent tan. And so let's look at these three trigonometry functions in terms of a particular angle. So in terms of the angle of concern. So if we look at the triangle on the right angle triangle on the left for, for an example. So sine angle, first, of, first one is sine. So sine angle is equal to the side opposite the angle divided by the hypotenuse. Or we can also say um, O divided by H as an opposite divided by hypotenuse. And in the left triangle case, this would mean that it's y over z. Next is cos. So cos angle is equal to side adjacent to the angle divided by the hypotenuse. We can also abbreviate this a over, hypo a over h, as in adjacent over hypotenuse. And in the left right angle triangles case, it's x over z. And then we have, lastly, tan angle, which is equal to side opposite the angle divided by side adjacent to the angle, which is equal to op O divided by A as an opposite divided by adjacent. And this equals Y over X. Now to simplify this, uh, the, the trigonometry functions, we can assign um, abbreviations. So for example, sine angle is equal to O over H as an opposite of hypotenuse, we can abbreviate as SO, S-O-H. And then cos, which equals to a over h, adjacent of hypotenuse, we can abbreviate ka, c-a-h. And then tan, uh, which equals to o over a, which is opposite over adjacent, we can abbreviate toa, t-o-a. So we, so we can remember this by mimicking so, ka, toa. Now right angles can also occur in, in an axis, in a plane. And this is typically how the questions come to us. So if we have the x and y axis here, we can have a triangle here, for example. And the angle of concern can be typically anywhere, right? If we know where the right angle triangle is, the 90 degrees is straight away, we can assign the hypotenuse. So this would be the hypotenuse here, h. And if this was the angle of concern, let's just say, the angle that we know, for example, we can assign which sides are the adjacent and which side is the, is the opposite. So in this case, here is the adjacent a and here is the opposite o. And now if we use so ka toa, we can each assign um, the ratios of the sides and the lengths of a particular, this particular triangle. So sine our angle is equal to O over H, cos angle is equal to A over H, and then tan angle is equal to O over A. And we can, so now let's look at an example to see how so ka toa works. So for example, the question is, on a sunny day, a tall building casts a shadow that is 80 meters long. The angle is given as 60 degrees between the sun rays and the ground. Find the height of the building. So what we first have to do is we have to draw this 
passage and make a diagram for us to easily comprehend. So for example, here we have the tall building and we have the sun above it. The sun will cast a the well, sun will beam light, which will cause the building to cast a 80 meter long shadow. So here is the 80 meter long shadow cast by the, by the building. And the passage also says that the angle is given as 60 degrees between the sun rays and the ground. So between the sun rays and the ground, this would be 60. And this would be straight away our angle of concern. And through from this diagram, we can also put that this would be the right angle of this triangle. And because we know the angle and the right angle, we can start assigning the names of the sides of this triangle. So this 80 meter shadow would be the adjacent side because it's adjacent to the angle. But, we, but what we firstly should have done is we should have found out where the right angle is and find, and find out which side is the hypotenuse, which in this case, here is the hypotenuse because it's opposite the right angle. And therefore, this O is the opposite side because it's opposite to the angle. And the question specifically asks, find the height of the building. And therefore, we need to find the opposite side, as you can see. And so we want to find O as in the opposite side. And we are given values of the angle and only the adjacent side. What can we do? Well, first of all, we need to use Sokatoa in this question. So right now, Sokatoa. And we have to find out which one of these to use. We have the adjacent value and we have the angle and we need to find O. So we need to find which which one of these has both opposite and adjacent in it, which is Toa because it's tan de, uh, angle is equal to opposite over adjacent. So this is what the equation we use. And so we can insert the values, which would mean that it's tan 60 degrees is equal to opposite over 80. And now we have to rearrange for the opposite side. And so we times both sides by 80 which will leave us with uh, tan 60 degrees times 80 is equal to the opposite side. And now we can solve for the opposite side, which means that opposite is equal to tan 60 degrees times 80. And if we jot this in the calculator, we write tan 60 degrees times 80, which will give us 138.56, which means that it's 138.56 meters, how tall the building is. So I hope you understood that. Now, another important relationship is the Pythagorean theorem. And this is when we want to know one of the sides of a right angle triangle. Given that, we do not have the angle, if you get what I mean. So the equation is given by, the Pythagoras theorem equation is given by h squared is equal to x squared plus y squared, where h is the hypotenuse and x and y are the remaining sides. Because we don't have the angle, we can assign these sides anyway. And also, you might have seen r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared, but this is exactly the same um, equation, where r is a hypotenuse. And this is, what we, this is what we will use. So for example, here we have a right angle triangle, and because we know where the right angle is, we can assign the hypotenuse r. So here is the hypothe hypotenuse r, and then we can assign x and y anywhere else. Now we can find the values of r, x, and y, given that we know two of the three values. So we can assign, so we can find out the length of r, the length of x, the length of y, but we have to know two, two of the three, and we don't need an angle for this. And so for example, if we have a right angle triangle here, and we have the length of four here and two here, um, and let's just say we want to find x. So we use this equation, r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. And we have to know which side is a hypotenuse and the remainder. Because you know where the right angle triangle is, r would be the hypotenuse here, and therefore y can be 2. And so if we re so we want to find x, and therefore we have to rearrange uh, this equation for x squared, and therefore we, we, we minus um, y squared from both sides, which gives us r squared minus y squared is equal to x squared, and we can rearrange this more nicely to have x squared is equal to r squared minus y squared, both exactly the same. And now we can insert the values. So therefore, we have x squared is equal to 4 squared minus 2 squared. And to solve for x, we have to remove the, x, the, square, the squared of the x. So we square root both, both sides, giving us x is equal to square root of 4 squared minus 2 squared. We jot this in the calculator, so we have square root of 4 squared minus 
2 squared, which mean, which gives us x is equal to 3.46, and therefore the length of x is 3.46, simple enough. I hope you understood that. Please like, comment, and share, and next we're going to look at the inverse of the trigonometry functions. Thank you.